Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have eight new coastal fall DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So let's get crafting. For the first DIY, I wanted to do like a coastal beach version of this leaf wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Now for the back, I wanna cover the back of the leaf with fabric. And so I wanted something beachy and blue. So I'm gonna use one of these little fleece baby blankets from the Dollar Tree. These are great to craft with because they're nice and large. You get lots of fleece fabric, very cozy. So I'm just gonna cut down a rectangle a little bit bigger than what I need. And we're gonna attach that to the back. But first I wanna start working like kind of on the structure of the leaf itself, I wanna line it with rope. So I'm using the brown rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm using the skinnier one. It's like the nine and a half foot. And I think I only ended up needing two packages um, to cover everything. Now I want to do the outline and glue the fabric on at the same time, but I don't necessarily need to do that for these middle pieces, the little veins of the leaf. I'm gonna do those first. That way I won't have to worry about like too much hot glue or anything like that showing up on the fabric behind. So I just cut a piece down. I'm making sure to cut the pieces short enough that there's gonna be room to do like a rope down the middle of the leaf and um, rope around the edges of the leaf um, later on. So I'm just gonna cut these pieces out. So a total of eight pieces and then just hot gluing those in place. I do craft on a silicone mat, so it makes it pretty easy to do this because the hot glue won't stick to that. Otherwise, you're probably gonna need to lift it up a little bit if you don't have something like that underneath of it. And they get a little bit bigger up here, but basically the same thing, I just cut and glue them down. Now, I wanna do like that baby blue uh, fleece background with like the rope outline um, of the entire leaf. The color of the leaf reform is really nice. You could do it without the rope, but I think that the rope definitely gives it a fun touch and actually it helps to attach the back of it too. So I think that's gonna work. So last piece, just gonna cut that and glue that on. And we have the middle sections all ready. Now for the uh, back of it, it gets a little bit messy. I like to kind of clean mine up a little bit just to make sure that you can't see any of that hot glue from the front, but otherwise it looks pretty good. I also like to burn the fuzzies off just using a lighter. It just cleans up your rope. So any kind of rope you use, even from Dollar Tree, Walmart, wherever, sometimes they can get a little fuzzy and this just helps clean them up and make them look a little bit better. Now, since I have that part done, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the back, but I thought I probably needed to make a hanger first um, while I can still get to this area of the leaf. So I'm gonna hang it like upside down like this. So I just take twine and tie a knot there to make a simple hanger. And now we can attach the back and add the rest of the rope to this little leaf wreath. That's hard to say. <laughs> so I lay the fabric underneath and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece down for the middle part of the, the wreath. And I'm just gonna hot glue that, pushing that in between um, the other two pieces of rope that I had cut down. And I'm making sure to use plenty of hot glue so that the extra hot glue kind of seeps around the wire and actually picks up the fabric from behind. So I'm only doing one section at a time because I want to make sure that my hot glue, you know, stays wet and it's easy to work with. So I broke it down into like three sections. Just testing to make sure that that is gluing the fabric to the back and it totally is. So we're going to do the same exact thing on the, the outer part of the leaf, just starting at the top. I thought that'd be a good place for the rope to kind of come to an end and then just gluing it around. I found that I could only do like one little section here at a time, 
without like um, my hot glue setting up because you kind of have to hold it into these like curved shapes to make sure that you cover all of the wire. I was trying to be really careful to make sure that you don't see any of the wire in the final pro product. But basically just outlining it with rope. And then once I get this all glued on, then I can go around and trim off the excess fabric. Um, I do it this way just to make sure that I have the perfect amount of fabric um, instead of trying to cut it and line it all up first. And I've done this with other types of materials. I've never covered, I don't think I've covered one of the backs of these kind of things with the baby blanket before, but I have crafted with it before and I really love it. Just if you need like light blue or light pink um, felt or anything like that, the fleece is gonna work great for that too. And I think I've, I've used the pink maybe for Valentine's Day, but I have used this beachy blue one a lot. So we almost have it all framed out here, just one little piece. I'm gonna cut it, have the little rope end here at the top. And there is our little beachy leaf so far. It's looking very beachy with the blue and the rope. And all the DIYs today are gonna have like a beach or a coastal influence. I know fall has already started, but I did want some more fall decor for my home. Um, to display after I take down my Halloween decorations because right now I have all my fall stuff up But I also have Halloween. I definitely have more fall decor But I am gonna have some bare places and I am not ready to decorate for Christmas yet, but Christmas DIY videos are probably gonna be coming pretty soon. I just did four Thanksgiving DIY videos because I don't like to skip Thanksgiving. I know that some people do and that's totally fine, but I like Thanksgiving as its own separate holiday too. So I like to decorate for that too, because you know me, I'm gonna decorate for everything. Now, this step was a little tricky cutting off the fabric because I was trying to cut it off without, um, so you don't see any of the blue felt from the front, but also I don't wanna cut it too short or there might be a hole or a gap. And I did a pretty good job of gluing that on. I didn't really have any areas to fix. Now to decorate the front, we're gonna use some of the little burlap leaves from the Dollar Tree, kind of the same shape, right? And one of the little metal words, this one says harvest. A lot of times I paint these, but, and if you wanted more contrast, you totally could. Like ivory would look really nice, but I kind of liked the metal on this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find a few areas where the metal will intersect with the rope and just glue that in place. And I think that the galvanized metal definitely has like a coastal feel with these, with these colors and textures. Now for the leaf, I'm gonna go ahead and just peel the wire off. I kind of like them better without the wire. And I'm only gonna do one. I kind of want it to be a little bit over towards the side, not perfectly straight down. And then we can decorate this with a few more coastal items as well. I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree seashells and see what I got in this package. Ooh, this shell looks really cool. So I think that's gonna look really nice. And we're just gonna decorate the top of the leaf with the shells. Now, if you wanted to do this um, with not a coastal theme, just skip the seashells. You could add pumpkins or whatever to the top. And you know, you can always change the colors, but today we're gonna to be doing a lot of blue. I love using blue for every holiday, and so fall is no exception. I found three great shells that I thought would look great, and I just hot glued those to the top of the wreath form, and here it is, our little Harvest Coastal Blue Leaf. I think it turned out really fun, and it's really unique. Um, it's a lot different than I decorated this before, um, I've done one of these, I think last year, but I love how it turned out. And here it is. It kind of looks like the harvest is two different colors there. I don't know, that must just be my flash or something like that because it really is like all like galvanized metal. But I love how it turned out. I think this will look great in my entryway for fall. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to DIY some fall coasters, so I picked up two coasters from the Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter what's on them because we're gonna DIY our own. But I did think the white would probably be helpful. And then I designed this great image with AI. 
It is like blue and orange pumpkins and blue and orange corn on the beach with a little lighthouse in the background, a little fall scene, and I think it's perfect for these. So I designed it at 3.75 inches, which is slightly larger than the coaster, but just a tiny bit. And I printed a, both of them out on cardstock, and I will share this free printable with you. And in the description below the video, if you want to recreate. Now the square is the easiest one to do because it's kind of the easiest one to cut and line up and all I'm gonna do is cover it. Now, since I used cardstock, I don't really have to worry. I don't think about this lap often showing through. If you use thin thinner paper, you might need to paint yours white first, but I just coat them with a nice coat of Mod Podge and then layer my little square right on the front. And I absolutely love this image. I'll probably, I might do something else um, with this larger, um, but I love how it turned out. It's so beachy and so fall. It is exactly what I was wanting. And so I just went ahead and glued the cardstock on both of those and gave them a dry. Now I told you that I made them slightly larger and that was so that I could sand them down to a perfect fit. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using a sanding block from Dollar Tree and sanding off the excess cardstock. I think my sanding block was a little wore out here, so it was a little harder than it needed to be. But basically I wanted them to be the perfect size and I wanted to have like a little kind of distressed white border around the outside to kind of go with the shape of the stone itself. And I flipped that over and that made it way easier. Totally was needing to be replaced. And I love these little sanding blocks from the Dollar Tree with the little plastic handles. They're so nice. So I went ahead and sanded both pieces down, cleaning off any excess dust here on our coasters. And then we are gonna seal these to make these durable and able to hold cold or wet drinks. So to do that, I'm gonna use Mod Podge first um, to seal the image down. I do a thin coat all over the coaster Go in, give that a quick dry, make sure all of my corners are good and secure. Gonna repeat the process. And I give it another dry, and then I actually go in there with a third layer of Mod Podge. Now at this point, they're pretty good and sealed, and you could probably leave it like that, but I really wanted mine waterproof, so I'm gonna go in with some matte clear um, sealer and just completely make them waterproof, but this step is optional. And if you had like a dishwasher proof Mod Podge or a stronger Mod Podge, you might not even have to do this, but I do want the matte finish because I don't think it looks beachy. And that's what this is. So this is how they turned out when they were dried. And I think they're absolutely beautiful. I only needed two of them um, for my coffee table. So that is all that I made, but look how beautiful they turned out. And they were so easy to make with just a printer and two Dollar Tree coasters. How fun is that scene? I love it. I am really impressed. I'm learning AI and you know, your girl is 50 years old. So <laughs> learning AI is challenging, but I'm having so much fun with it. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I've introduced memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. All you have to do to join is hit the join button on my YouTube page and you're in. Now for the next DIY, I thought let's try a coastal fall terrarium. So I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree candlestick this one is like light blue on top and white on the bottom. So I thought that would go beautiful with my coastal theme. And then one of these jars from the Dollar Tree. I love these, they're nice and big. I'm gonna flip mine upside down and make a terrarium. And so this is gonna be the top. So I'm gonna have to get rid of this super sticky sticker on top and clean it up a little bit. But basically we're gonna turn the jar upside down we're gonna display it on the candlestick and we're gonna fill it in with like a blue succulent and some pumpkins. So once I got that all cleaned up, I wasn't too impressed that the center, the circle wasn't centered there on the top, but that's fine. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and start decorating the base. Now it's already stainless steel, but I wanted to add a little bit of texture to mine. So I'm gonna use some burlap ribbon. And I got this great burlap ribbon at Pop Shelf the other day. Um, I haven't seen this size at Dollar Tree, but it works great for something like this. It was $2. And so I just glue that around the rim of my lid. And that gives a nice beachy burlap feel to that. That's gonna be the base of our terrarium that's going to attach to the candlestick. Now, it was a little bit of an experiment putting this together. I knew I was gonna need some foam and I wanted to do blue. So I'm gonna use one of the little blue succulents from the Dollar Tree. It is on this really large stem, which I don't really need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the tag and kind of take this apart. And then I can kind of attach everything to the base. Now I'm gonna use pumpkins. I use one of the little ivory ones from the Dollar Tree. And then I had a little tiny orange one from the Target Dollar Spot that I thought would be great too to add a little bit of orange to it. I take some floral foam from the Dollar Tree and I just cut down a square that will fit inside the lid. It's not gonna quite fit inside the jar though, so I am gonna have to trim it down. And my goal here is to kind of carve it, to kind of make it look like a rock. That way I can boost up the succulent and the pumpkins, and then we're gonna fill in the rest of the terrarium with sand. Now I went ahead and hot glued mine to the base, but you might be better off without doing that. I'm not sure. I did have a little bit of issues <laughs> from that here in a little bit but I am gonna carve it down a little bit more where it's a little skinnier at the top, kind of like a stone um, sticking out of the ocean like that. Um, that way I can cover that all up with sand. I won't have any sharp corners or anything sticking out. Now for the succulent itself, I'm just gonna do a little hot glue on the stem and push that down into the foam, kind of towards the back of the terrarium. And I've done beach terrariums on my channel before, but I've never done a one for fall. So I thought this was fun. Now for the pumpkins, I just use toothpicks. And since they're made out of foam, I can just put the toothpicks right through the bottom. And we're just gonna stick those one on each side of the little succulent. And then we're gonna fill the rest of the terrarium up with sand. I kind of wanted to do shells in there, but I knew I was gonna have to do a lot of shaking and stuff like that. And I thought I would probably bury any of the shells that I put in there anyway. So I think that the sand and you know the succulent is gonna give me that beachy vibe I'm looking for. Now I didn't hot glue the pumpkins and I kind of felt like I probably needed to because they dig to get it to all stay in place. So I just hot glued the little toothpicks in there and that is what we have so far for the terrarium. Now, if you had a larger jar of some kind, you could even add more, but I think that's all that's gonna fit. Now to fill the jar, I'm gonna use Dollar Tree sand. I had a bunch of it. This is the tan sand. And this is kind of the tricky part you have to try to figure out how much, you know, the stuff is going to displace the sand. So I put an amount in there and I'm gonna try it. And spoiler, I did put a little bit too much in there. So be careful with how much sand that you use because I did have to take it back apart. But I went ahead and set it on there. Now gluing it to the base is kind of tricky at this part, like screwing it on, getting everything to move while it's buried in sand. So I don't know if you need to glue it to the base or not. Now to attach the candlestick to it, I'm gonna use some of this cement adhesive from the Dollar Tree and just do it around the rim of the candlestick holder. And I am going to do hot glue in the middle to try to give me some like fast hold, but otherwise we're gonna rely on that cement to glue the ceramic to the metal. Just sit that on there. Um, I did have a little bit excess adhesive gluing it um, coming out the sides. Now I probably should have checked to see if my sand was right before I did this step because it probably would have made it easier, but I didn't. <laughs> so you might wanna, you know, flip yours over and check yours first. So I flipped mine over and I'm like, yeah, there's too much sand. See how my pumpkins are buried? Like my succulents, okay, but my pumpkins are definitely buried. So I just unscrewed the lid and we're gonna try to adjust it. And as you can see, the hot glue doesn't really hold when you do the spinning. So that's kind of be expected. So I dumped out a little bit of sand and then I'm just gonna go ahead and reattach. I did hot glue again, even though 
it's probably not necessary. And then just screw my lid back on and hopefully that is the right amount of sand now. So I flip it over, you wanna shake all of it down. It's kind of like a snow globe, right? Kind of have to shake it until you get your little beach terrarium that you want in there. I want my sand higher in the back, back by where my succulent is and kind of lower in the front so you can see my cute little mini pumpkins. So just kind of shake it and get the sand to fall exactly where you need it to be. It's kind of fun. <laughs> and I messed with it a little bit and I am happy with it. I think it turned out really cute. So a little fall version of the beach terrarium with some cute little pumpkins on the beach. And this is how it turned out. I love making terrarium. They're so much fun. I mean, you don't have to have real plants or anything like that. You can just use like the faux succulents from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Tree sand. And everything was from the Dollar Tree here except for that ribbon and that little tiny orange pumpkin. But I like it. I think it's a fun touch for fall. Something a little bit whimsical and unexpected. Okay, for the next DIY, I'm going to DIY a pumpkin. So I picked up this pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. I think it's kind of ugly, <laughs> so we're going to remake it. It has this bump out, which I thought was cool at first, but then I discovered that it was made out of cardboard, and that's not that cute. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that um, just by using heat and a, like a little Dollar Tree putty knife to scrape that all off and just give me a big block pumpkin. You wouldn't have to use specifically this pumpkin, but I really did like the size of it and that it's nice and heavy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mosaic pumpkin for fall using the little glass mosaic pieces from Dollar Tree. Now I picked up several different ones. I picked up these, these are like blues. I end up using one package of those. These are like pastels. I end up using one package of those. And these are like black and white and I end up using one package of those. The reason why is because I kind of wanted to do a coastal beachy color combination and I just needed some of the colors from all of them. But it's the first time I've crafted with these from the Dollar Tree. Have you guys seen these at the Dollar Tree? I, um, I, I picked up some more recently, but I've had some of these for a while and I've never crafted with them. But I'm gonna pick out from the pastel package. I wanna save all of the light blue and the light, almost like a lavender blue. I think that'll go with my beachy blue decor. And then from the blue package, I'm gonna go ahead and dump that out. And I'm just doing this on the pumpkin itself so I can kind of guess you know, how many I'm gonna need to cover it in a mosaic pattern. Now these are all blue and white and really nice, but I was thinking I didn't really like um, the really royal blue. I didn't think that really went with the beachy decor. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick out all of the bright royal blue ones um, and save those for later. Cause again, we're going for like beachy blue and coastal, but I did want some white in it too. So that is what we're gonna use the black and white package for. Now, I thought I would need way more than these because this is a pretty big pumpkin, but they go further than you, there's more in there than you think, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just gonna go ahead and only use the white ones out of this and kind of scatter those around the pumpkin until I think I have enough to fill everything up. Now, to fill in the different areas around the mosaic, I'm gonna use some grout that I picked up at the hardware store had it for a couple of years. I used it to fix my shower, but I've also crafted with it before. It's great because it's pre-mixed and ready to go in a jar. But I first have to figure out how to glue all these on. Now, I did not want to hot glue them all on. I figured I'd probably burn myself. It might not be the sturdiest adhesive for the glass tiles. So I decided to use the multi-purpose cement from Dollar Tree. I was just trying to figure out how I was going to pull this off. I don't really have to paint it or anything because you're not gonna be able to see any of this image through. So I decided to do one third of the pumpkin at a time. So I just spread out the multi-purpose cement, which is pretty strong um, adhesive, on with a foam paintbrush. And while it's wet, I can just start scattering these all around. I wanna do like random blues. I'm like turning them every which way. I don't want like too many of the same colors in the same place. I want it to look very random. 
it's going to be a mosaic. It's not going to be a really tight mosaic. Another option for this is you could work some little tiny seashells in too if you wanted, but I kind of really just wanted to go with the glass mosaics and see how this turns out. So the middle section, the same way. I'm just doing them section by section because I don't want that multi-purpose cement to start to harden up before I get all the tiles on there. So again, just filling that all up with a random pattern. And I'm so glad I decided to do this. It really turned out to be a work of art. I was really impressed with how this turned out. And I'm wondering if you could kind of DIY your own grout. It wasn't too expensive. The grout I got is probably is way more than you need for crafting, but I think I picked that up for like $10 at the hardware store, something like that. And I've had it forever. It goes pretty far. So I did the same thing on the left side Got everything glued down. I think it's looking really cute. A few more pieces that I want to attach to make sure there's no areas with like not any tiles. So I kind of check it here and there and try to fill in any gaps. Now the glue is still wet on there. So I'm gonna go in with my heat gun and dry that until it is you know, dry and now we can attach the grout. This is the grout that we're gonna use. The color is linen and it really kind of looks like sand. So I really like this. And again, I've had this forever and it's still like, you know, perfect to use. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that up with a putty knife and then we're gonna attach that right on top of the glass mosaic. It's gonna fill in any of the other areas. I guess maybe you could use like, I don't know, plaster of Paris or something like that for this too. And I wanna make sure that I don't get too much on there. I just need enough to cover the glass. So I found it a little bit easier to use this larger one, this larger putty knife. And so I'm just gonna scoop that on, pushing it down in between the tiles. Luckily that adhesive was super strong, so everything stayed in place right where it needs to be. And then just spread it out, kind of scraping the top of the tiles with my putty knife to kind of make it thin enough just to cover the back of the pumpkin and the sides of the tiles, but not to cover the tiles themselves. Now the sides were a little tri tricky because there is no wall. So I just kind of put it on there and kind of scrape it out as flat as I can up against the sides, kind of keeping that shape and working my way around all the edges until all of it is filled in with grout. Now I've worked with this before. I've made a sea glass pumpkin. If you've seen one of my previous coastal fall videos um, and I let that stuff set on there too long. This time I was quick. <laughs> I was quick with the wet sponge, wiping off the grout on the top of the glass stones to make sure I get them all good and cleaned up before the grout even has a chance to set up at all. So I just lightly went over the top of it with a wet sponge to try to at least get the tiles wet, right? And then I can kind of go in and start cleaning those up. Um, before I wanted, I thought maybe it needed to set up a little bit first, but no, it really needs to be removed from the tile quickly. So then I went over with a paper towel. I noticed with the paper towel, it was kind of wiping the grout back on the tiles a little bit. So I'll show you how I end up cleaning that up. I just go over it again with my sponge, clean off all those beautiful tiles. Isn't this pretty? I absolutely love how this turned out. Definitely doesn't look like something um, that you made with the Dollar Tree. And to fix it, I did a paper towel and I just laid it on there and I blotted the tiles just from the top instead of going side to side so I don't get any more grout on the tiles themselves. And once I get all my tiles cleaned up, then I can let this dry and harden. It really didn't take very long to set up. I did give it a head start with my heat gun, but then I just kind of set it aside um, flat on its back like that. And look how beautiful this pumpkin turned out. Aren't those little mosaic tiles gorgeous? And I love the colors that I chose. I think they go really nicely together. And so here it is, our little glass mosaic, coastal fall pumpkin. I think it's coastal because I think it looks like the sand and of course all of the blue that we used. But I didn't really want to add any more um, decorations to it. 
I really want just the art of the mosaic to be the star of the show. And I just love it. I think it's so pretty. I love making pieces like this. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked below. You'll find out when I post new videos and you can share what you've been crafting. I love looking at your all's great ideas. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, back to the crafting. I found this sign at the fall section at Dollar Tree. It has blue, white, and orange pumpkins in the back. So it's got the blue that I was looking for, but I thought we could take it up a notch and try to make it look a little bit more coastal. So we're gonna do that with Dollar Tree rope. So we're using the same rope that we used on the leaf wreath. It is the nine and a half foot, the kind of the skinnier one. Thought that would be easier to do the letters. And I just loop around the cursive H. I decide to cut mine so that I don't have to overlap it and make like a big bump um, with the rope on top of the rope. And I'm kind of glad that I did that for this because I think it did make it um, look more high end in the end. Um, I have done cursive writing with rope before and left it all one piece. But since I was trying to kind of keep to the shape of the home that's already on the sign, I'm just gonna kind of cut it. So I'm gonna have to cut it here again to prevent an overlap here on the little loop on the O. So I just cut that down and glue it on. And I just wanna cover all of the frame because I don't really like it. It's like a brown, boring, like wood look. But the back of the sign is really cute with like the little pumpkin print. It's totally my color and style um, for fall decorating. So I thought just adding some rope and we're also going to add some burlap to this. We can take this Dollar Tree sign and just make it extra special. So I got to this point and there's another place I need to cut the loop of the E. I'm gonna cut that down and then I just have a little tail piece. And now, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna make sure everything is glued down, burning off any fuzzies from the home out of rope. It's just a fun idea of something that you can do with these Dollar Tree signs. Now for the burlap, I'm gonna use the burlap trim. This is the one that comes in the middle of the package. And there's plenty in one package to go around the entire frame. So I'm just gonna hot glue that burlap trim to it and see how like um, great texture that adds to it just makes it look so much more high end. We're gonna do the same thing here on the top. And of course, you know, it's made out of like this burlap jute material. It's gonna go great with the rope. And it just added lots of texture and beauty to this little fall sign. And that's basically all there is to it. Our little rope home sign with the little blue pumpkins. I was gonna add some seashells to it, but I didn't think it really needed any. I think the rope is enough of a coastal touch with the blue pumpkins, of course, but this is how it turned out. Our little home pumpkin sign. I think that's the first time I've covered the word with rope, but I really like how it turned out because I really like rope like in a cursive design like that. I think it looks really pretty. What do you guys think about this DIY? I hope you're getting some great crafting inspiration today. Now for the next DIY, I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree sign. This is one of the ones with the wood bead hanger, but I'd already removed the hanger because I was gonna use it for something else and I never ended up using it. So um, I just wanted a square sign and I like the wood frame. So I'm gonna protect that with some painter's tape, but I do want to paint the background of the slatted wood sign. I want it to be beachy and blue. I'm gonna use this color, it's Apple Barrel Cloudless. I love this color. You can get this in my Amazon shop below. Um, it's really inexpensive and it even ships with Prime. I think it's like 50 or 60 cents. I absolutely love this color, I'm obsessed with it. You can also get it at Walmart. And I just go over the entire sign with one coat of that beautiful blue color, switching to a tiny brush so I can kind of get in all the grooves and around the sides of the frame. Make sure everything's colored and blue. Now I have that little welcome pumpkin that you see there. And the only reason I have that is because we're gonna kind of use that for a stencil um, for the pumpkin that we are gonna design on this little sign. 
I am want to make a driftwood pumpkin using some of the wood slices from the Dollar Tree. So for the first step, I'm just gonna use the pumpkin as a template. Just makes it a little bit easier to get the pumpkin shape, but a pumpkin shape is pretty easy. And I'm gonna trace it out. I did kind of make the mistake of using an ink pen. I probably should have used a pencil because I did have to paint over <laughs> that pen quite a bit to try to get, like I didn't want any lines visible, but I used a pen. Now these wood slices from the Dollar Tree look extra driftwood to me. So we're gonna try to use them instead of driftwood to see if we can make a Dollar Tree driftwood project. Some of them even have branches, which is fun. So we're gonna piece them together and make a little pumpkin. I decided to do mine horizontal like that. I am gonna have to cut some of the pieces down to get them to fit, but I think we can make it work. I have cut those before with the little miter scissors that I got on Amazon. So we're gonna give that a try. So I'm gonna start right here at the bottom of the pumpkin. I'm gonna overlap the side slightly and just glue on my first piece of driftwood. Now these come in all different widths. So I just tried to make sure I used, you know, fairly the same size width going across in my rows where it would at least be even. So that one was kind of a thicker one. This one's gonna be a thinner one. So I'm gonna find another thin piece to do the right side. And I'm just cutting those down to size with my miter scissors and gluing them on. Now, some of the pieces are a little bit thicker like that one, and they can be a little trickier to cut. Sometimes I have to cut them and then turning them around and cut them again to get them to cut with the scissors, but that does work. That's when I realized I probably should have used a pencil because then I had to kind of start touching up my lines here and there um, just because that ink was kind of obvious. I don't know what I was thinking with that. Now I don't want all of my joints to be in the same place. I'm gonna kind of switch it up, start like doing the long ones on the right sometimes and the shorter ones over on the left. Just kind of like you're doing flooring or anything like that. You just don't want all of your joints to end up in the same spot. And again, touching up my paint there. And again, skinny, and then I use another skinny one for the other side. We're just gonna cover up that entire pumpkin design with the driftwood. So the only labor intensive part of this one was cutting them down to size. So you know, if you have like a larger sign that you're working with, you could always do this without cutting them because as you can see, they do come in different um, lengths anyway. You could kind of do a more random shape, but I was kind of restricted to the size because I wanted to do it on this Dollar Tree sign. So again, I don't really mind if you can see the blue paint between the two driftwood pieces. I'm just trying to make sure that you can't really see the line that I painted on the sides of the pumpkin. And I think it is easier to cut them with the miter scissors. I mean, they do require quite a bit of hand strength, but you could totally use a saw if you needed to cut yours down too. But I really love these wood slices from the Dollar Tree. They come in like three different kinds. I think these are my favorite. I've been finding them a lot more at some of my smaller Dollar Trees. So I've been able to stock up on them. Now I don't have much left of the pumpkin, um, just trying to find the right size. And again, trying to cover up my ink <laughs> with more paint. So I just kind of need a chunky small piece here for the top and glue that on. Um, I was trying to decide what I was gonna do for the stem of the pumpkin. I do kind of want it to be driftwood. I at first tried to do it with this wood, but then I ended up switching it to something else. And I'll show you that too. I think I need one more row to finish off my pumpkin shape. I did cut down some of the driftwood here to make a stem. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like if you did just want to use the stem. I used like two together, but then I decided mm, I want something a little different. And I have some real driftwood from the beach. So I'm just going to cut down a rough piece of real driftwood just to kind of mix it up. And I just cut that down where it kind of had a jagged edge, but a smooth bottom so I can kind of attach it right there on the top of the pumpkin. And I don't really want to add any other kind of design to that. I think that looks perfect as is. I don't want mine to be a hanging sign. I want it to be a stand up sign. So I'm just going to take one of these wood Jenga blocks from five below and glue that to the back of my sign. 
making sure that I can kind of slant the sign back a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of make a small gap right there to make it slightly lean back so it will sit perfectly in my home decor. And how cute is that? A little Dollar Tree version of a driftwood pumpkin. I absolutely love how this turned out. I mean, I know it's not driftwood, but it does kind of give you that same feel, right? Now, if you wanted like not to do the coastal version, I think it would still look great on any kind of color background. You're just gonna want some kind of color to make the wood pop against it. But it was really easy to do besides all of the cutting. That was a little bit of work, but I absolutely love how it turned out. Another piece of fall art. Okay, for the next DIY, we're gonna do something fun. Um, I wanted to do gratitude stones, but instead of gratitude stones for fall, I decided to do gratitude shells. So I'm gonna use one of these little Shore Living plastic shell dishes. I stock up on these every year when Shore Living comes out at Dollar Tree and a Dollar Tree blue candle holder. I want to make like just a little display piece that we can fill in with gratitude shells because it's that time of year where we need to be grateful for things, right? So I'm gonna first start by decorating the large shell that's gonna hold everything. You could also do this with a bowl, but I had the shell, so I thought, let's try it with the shell. I want the shell to look a little bit realistic, so I flipped it over and I'm just painting the whole thing with like this parchment, um, antique parchment color. And I'm gonna distress it to kind of make it look like a real shell because it's got a great texture and then leave the iridescence on the inside where we're gonna display all of the gratitude shells. So I went ahead, painted it, dried it. I still had lots of areas where you could kind of still see the plastic through it. So I'm gonna go back over it with one more touch to touch that up. And then I want to distress all that great pattern on there. To bring that out, we are gonna distress it all with some antique wax by Waverly. See that great texture on the shell? I stock up on these every year, um, every spring when the Shore Living line comes out because there's so many things you can do with these. They're so versatile. And they make a great bowl or holder, which is what we're gonna use for in this project. Now you do have to be careful when you kind of blend in your antique wax by Waverly because it's easy to take that paint off the plastic. So I did have to kind of go back in, distress it more with that ivory color kind of fill in any areas where I might have taken too much paint off there with my baby wipe. So I did that, gave it a dry, and we have a nice textured shell. Now for the inside, it's this beautiful like iridescent color. And I think that looks really pretty. The only thing is, is it's almost a little bit too shiny and plastic. So I thought I could tone it down a little bit with some matte Mod Podge. And this actually worked great because it toned it down, but it still has that beautiful iridescence that you might see inside of a shell. So I just went over with one coat, just making sure I get everything covered and let that dry in the matte finish, just really took it down um, a notch. And we're gonna use that shell to attach to the candlestick to make a beautiful holder for the gratitude shells. I've seen people do gratitude stones a lot, so I thought shells would be a perfect um, coastal version of this. Now I need something strong to attach my plastic shell to my candle holder. So I'm gonna use some E6000. I love these little like single use tubes because I hate the large ones because they always get clogged on me. And then I just go around the border of my candlestick with that. And then again, I'm gonna use like hot glue like in the center to kind of catch it at first and make that set up first and then let my E6000 harden because that will keep anything attached. I just lay my shell right on top. If you didn't have one of the Shore Living shells, you could totally do this with a Dollar Tree bowl. It's gonna give you a similar feel, but of course the shell is even prettier. So I'm gonna set that aside, let that dry. We can start working on our gratitude shells. Now these are just shells that I found washed up on the beach. They're really bleached out. They're not the prettiest shells in the world, but I think they're gonna be perfect for this project. So I'm picking out large ones um, that are pretty intact because that's gonna give me more room to write in them. Because what I'm gonna do is make them into little um, gratitude shells. So I'm gonna start writing things to be grateful for 
this fall on the inside of the shelves. And then I'm gonna leave a lot of them blank so that my family can add to it. And it's something that we can use for Thanksgiving as well. So I'm gonna paint them beachy and blue. I want like the back of them to be blue, leaving the inside of the shelves to be white so that we can write on them. So for the first half of them, I am just using this cloudless color again, acrylic by Apple Barrel, and trying to get the entire shell covered, at least on one side. I didn't really have any brushes. I only had my foam brush. I was trying to get it down inside um, the grooves of the shell and it actually worked out pretty well. So I just do half of them that color. I'm trying to avoid getting paint on the inside of the shell if I can. Now for the other half, I switched up colors to Caribbean Blue. This is a Target brand and I thought it was darker, but you know what? It almost looks exactly the same, but I wanted complimentary blue colors. But looking at it, I really, there's a small difference. I really thought the Cloudless was a lot lighter than the Caribbean Blue, but maybe not. They look pretty close, don't they? So I did the other half in that color. Just one coat to make them blue. Then we can flip them all over. When I started to flip them over, I noticed that I kind of need to touch up the lips. So just using a tiny brush, I'm just going to go in there with that cloudless color and just paint that little part because it just looks like that part needs to be painted too. And then I'm gonna start actually writing on these. So it kind of starts the gratitude shelves and more can be added to later. This is a really fun DIY to do. I was gonna do it at first with stones and just do gratitude stones that you can use a paint pen on. Um, this actually worked out even better because the inside of the white shell is so easy to write on with just a Sharpie. So this is all dried and ready to go. I'm just gonna put a little bit of sand in there just to kind of nest the gratitude shells in. Not too much, because I don't want to cover up that beautiful iridescent shell. And then I'm just gonna start writing things that I'm grateful for on the inside of the shells. I'm using a blue, like, fine-tipped Sharpie. I think I got this at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna put family on this one, just kind of lay that in there. And I'm gonna, you know, do about half of them or maybe a few of them just to get started, just so I have lots of blanks left so we can keep adding it to it. Of course, I'm thankful for the beach, right? And I'm just trying to think of words that would be great for this. And that way it kinda gets the ball rolling on the gratitude shells. So I did family, I did home. You gotta have food, right? So excited about Thanksgiving coming up. And how about health? That's always something to be grateful for. Now for the ones that are still blank, I'm gonna flip those over so you'll get the beautiful blue shells and you'll only be able to read the ones that have messages on them. And as we fill these out, we can flip them over. You could always write on them and leave them flipped like that and someone could kind of go through and look at them but a fun interactive DIY for fall, but again, super coastal. You can display your little Sharpie with it just like that so that others can join the fun and making the gratitude shells. If you have any little ones around, I think they're gonna get a big kick out of this as well. This would be great on your Thanksgiving table as well. And this is how it turned out. I absolutely love the shell dish. I think that it made the gratitude shells extra special. And guys know I love those blue candlesticks from the Dollar Tree. I craft with those all of the time. So the seashells were free, but basically two items from the Dollar Tree, I guess, to pull that off, the shell and the candlestick. So only $2.50 plus a little tiny bit of sand and paint. Now for this DIY, I wanted to make a coastal pumpkin. So I found this slatted pumpkin wood sign at the Dollar Tree. Some of the fall stuff is starting, they're starting to run out of it at Dollar Tree. Um, so this will probably be my last new fall DIY this year. And I am going to paint it with that same cloudless color. And I just kind of want to stain it. It's this beautiful wood, but I want it to be beachy blue. And this is my favorite color of blue, as you know. Make sure I get in the grooves so I can kind of paint the slats in the back too. I was inspired to make this piece. Um, 
I had designed um, with chat GPT a image, a beach image of a starfish pumpkin. And then I looked at what they came up with and I'm like, oh, I love it. I'm going to try to do the same thing um, with actual starfish and stuff. So I have one of these starfish left over from Shore Living. This one's already white, so it's perfect. At first, I tried to kind of just put it over the stem of the pumpkin like that, but I didn't really like the rope being in the back like that with the knot. It was going to kind of make it stick out from the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and just glue it to the front. That way we can have this great starfish on the front. Now, if you have some of these left over and yours are like the red ones or the blue ones, they're super easy to paint. And you could even use the smaller white um, Dollar Tree starfish as well, but I really liked this big one. So I just glued that right in the center of the pumpkin. And then we are gonna fill out the rest of the pumpkin with the little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones that come in little glass bottles. I kind of want an assortment of different kinds of shells and sizes. And I also am gonna add some little tiny starfish too. I get these on Amazon. These are linked in my Amazon shop below. I love crafting with those. They go great with these little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree. So just trying to fill up the area, kind of symmetrical, but with different things and glue these on. These little shells are super easy to glue on with hot glue. They just need a little tiny bit on one edge. And of course the starfish, a super tiny dot. I'm using my fine tip hot glue gun just because I don't need very much glue at all for this. And we're gonna kind of just finish it up with seashells. Now you could also add sand to it. I thought about adding sand to part of the sign, but I really liked the beachy blue color. And so I decided no sand on mine, but sand would be really cute on the front of yours as well. And so easy, our little starfish pumpkin is perfect for a coastal fall. And I love how the colors turned out. It's a nice small sign, so you could display this anywhere. Thinking about putting this one in my kitchen for fall, I think it's so beautiful. And I love those starfish. Those were new this year with Shore Living. I've never seen them before. Um, definitely stock up this spring when you see them because I'm sure they'll go fast. But quick, easy coastal fall DIY. I really hope you enjoyed all of the fall DIYs today and got some fun crafting inspiration. Um, and if you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button, comment your favorite DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Enjoy the final reveal. Like wind in our sails Hold on tight I can smell the shore It's right in front of us If we just hold on tight This vision that I saw Is getting closer every dawn Ooh, ooh, ooh. We are dreamers of Dreamers of the shore
give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bum members. Thank you so much to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Verna Noctegal, Nancy Warner, Julie Miller, Jan Salada, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Butterfly Mama, and Maria Grace. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. And again, if you would like to be a member of Crafty Beach, all you have to do is hit the join button. It's $4.99 a month and you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos like this one. And if you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting, everyone.